Victory has made you weak, Batman. You assumed the darkness. I was born in it. And all the way through the film, I was thinking, there's something not right here. And then midway through, I worked out what it is. For if you wish to defeat me, Batman, you must make me sleepy. For when I go to sleep, all my friends go to sleep. It's fucking bad puss. <laughs> <laughs> So, with this joke, I trust you. <laughs> My mate Andy's got two kids, and he calls his son the accident. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair to him, he is very badly burned. <laughs> <laughs>
There's some of you kicking around. But there are some younger people in the audience. Can I ask, sir, how old you are? 33. 33. That is pretty much in the bottom 5% of this room. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone younger than 33? Very pleased to meet you. You've been working proper hard this evening. I hope other people have bought you a drink. I certainly will myself. Uh, this one you might have to sit out, because looking at the demographic, as you look around the room here, you'll see a lot of what I'll politely term experience. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's nice, right? Like, this is Punty's best function room. You're far enough. Wisdom comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. So look at the crowd, as they file out, and think, what did they bollock up in their lives? Some of these fuckers make Gandalf look like a Teletubby. <laughs> You're 18, so this one might go over your head, so it goes for the rest of you. Don't you know you've got your daddy's eyes, and your daddy was Marty Feldman. <laughs>
dirty boy. He works very hard and he dreams of his hobbies. But one of those hobbies is theft. <laughs> Gerald, he's not like the others, no, no. He doesn't steal paper or pens. No, you see, Gerald, he steals ladies' knickers. Knickers! He doesn't feel comfy in men. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he sniffs liquors, it doesn't mean he's a crack at it. If you like that one, fucking check out the next line. He drives a white van called the Transit of Venus. <laughs> Dirty old mattress inside. <laughs> You're not too fussy about sexual partners. You might just get offered a ride. <laughs> Gerald, he doesn't like condoms, no, no. He finds them restrictive in bed, some men do. So just like a pervy MacGyver, resourceful, he uses crisp packets instead. <laughs> 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 he started in the credit crunch. <laughs>
So, if you have a dark sense of humour, I have a way you can earn some extra quid. All you need is a dark sense of humour. This is why I asked earlier on. If you've got a dark sense of humour, fucking easy, you can get a few extra quid. Floristry. <laughs> 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 a random one. All right, fish and chips is a good example of what we call a non-cyclical enterprise. When times are hard, people have fish and chips. It's a treat, but it's an affordable treat. When times are bad, fish and chips are there for you. When was the last time any of you saw a really good chippy closed down? Not one of the ones that does curries and kebabs and pizza and southern fried chicken as well. Just fish and chips. When was the last time anyone saw a really good chippy closed down? There was a pandemic that was rough. But by and large, we saw them through because we're loyal to them. Because fish and chips are a non-cyclical enterprise. Floristry is the same. Every stage of the human journey, we can mark it with flowers. But the thing is, as a florist, your overheads are stock and premises, and also those weird long black buckets that you don't see anywhere above them in florists and outside crematorium. <laughs> Seriously, if you've been in a B&Q and thought, fuck me, there's one of those long black buckets, I've only ever seen them in florists. You don't. You've got to send off special and show your floristry card. <laughs> Here is how you make money from floristry with zero outlay. What we're doing here is reducing the overheads of stock and premises to nothing. But you need a dark sense of humour. And also to sell a tape of teddy bear to the lamppost at the end of your road. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty dog fuckers, you will. Yes, clap that, because it's fucking genius. You come back 24 hours later, oh look at all the free stock. <laughs> and opening a fucking day. <laughs> <laughs> I am the luckiest man alive, but not because I get to say shit like that to an old. Oh, I'm in love. Oh, that comes across. If you're in love, give me a cheer. Woo! <laughs> 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 I was expecting more women to reciprocate. I was like, Woo! What a time to find out. Woo! <laughs> 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 out of your league, give me a cheer. Woo! I had a girl over there. Oh, Emma, that's very romantic indeed, but I've been asking that question for a while, and the number of times that women cheer, vanishingly rare. Because normally it's just fellas going, if I cheer now, it sounds like I've paid her a compliment that I've done none of the heavy lifting up. <laughs> if I cheer now, she might just be inveigled by the speed of my mind. Yeah! And there could be filthy squeezing of this for Neil. <laughs> no, because every woman in the place has went, really? Fucking transparent. Every woman in the place has kind of went, I could do better. <laughs> I, <laughs> my girlfriend is far too good for a show like me. And when people see us walking down the street together, they genuinely, you know that look that people give you? I don't know if you know that look. The look where someone looks at you and then looks at your partner and then looks back at you and looks at your partner. <laughs> And the face is kind of just a kind of, as if to say, mate, either you've got money or you've got something in your pants, you could beat a donkey out of the <laughs> The fuck is the situation here? Genuinely, it looks like she's holding my hand to stop me from darting into traffic. <laughs> I do pay up to it sometimes when we're out together. We're walking hand in hand, and we do walk hand in hand, I'll swing about and go, fire engine. <laughs> <laughs> Society's problem. <laughs> By the way, that Nick just looked down at the crane and don't you fucking dare. <laughs> 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 Good God, that's what state <laughs> is about. If it's just reinforcing your shit, you already know. <laughs> I know, <love> you. <laughs> <laughs> also, not allowed biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Of 
Accolades, and we're walking down Harrogate Road, and we're holding her hand, and she is so smart and so sharp. I can't compete with it. I've been doing comedy for nearly 30 years, but she is the funny one in the relationship. And her mind is like a steel trap. She's got this dark sense of humour that people who know her won't believe about her because she is just lovely and it shines out of her. She's compassionate and thoughtful, but people don't know the dark diamond at the heart of her. <laughs> We're walking up the road and a hearse went past leading a funeral cortege. I take my hat off, show a bit of respect. I'm a bald man, I wear a hat, it's warm for the winter, shade in the summer. <laughs> Joe looked, and leaning up against the coffin is a floral tribute that just says, Dad. She went, ooh, they've missed out the E. <laughs> 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 and you sat there thinking, date isn't a word. Fucking, that was like a proper break in the grass mold. Wow! Wow! That speed of mind, it's so through it. Like the thread, like the letters in a stick of Blackpool Rock. She, before the pandemic, she said to me, remind me when we're in town, I want to call it a fat face. And I went, what's fat face? And it's a clothing shop. I'm fucking St. Jervis Hospice, I haven't got a clue. And she says, oh, by the way, it's not ham. Or what? It's not ham. I said, what's not ham? Bacon? Prosciutto? And she said, no, it's not ham, it's H&M. <laughs> 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 and that's a great stuff. I go to town, going to, you know, play spike stuff. And, um, <laughs> she said, remind me when we're in town, I want to call it the fat face. I didn't have a fucking clue. But because she'd asked me to remind her, when I forgot, she didn't know. Because she'd use me like an external flash drive. Look, the USB memory stick. Remember this for me, plug. And I just went, okay. Forgot. <laughs> Fat face, it's a clothing shop. I didn't know. She'd seen a jumper that she liked online. She'd been doing some shopping online, for that is the European hand signal for shopping online. <laughs> no thumbs get involved. Huh. She'd seen this jumper, wanted to actually go and try it on in a branch. <laughs> went out of my head completely. But, because I'm not an animal, I'm a terrible boyfriend, but I'm not a beast. Just before the pandemic, we were on a little city break, we went to Copenhagen in Denmark. If you've not been, it's fucking lovely. There's a branch of fat face in the middle. My brain goes, oh, ding a ling a ling a ling a ling Remind Joe, when you're in town, doesn't matter what town. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to call into fat face. So this is as fast as it happened, verbatim, this is how it happened. We are walking down a road in Denmark, holding hands, my brain sees, <laughs> and I just went, oh, fat face, bald cunt. <laughs> <laughs> If I finish up in one minute, can they all get another drink? Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen. Say again? Ha ha ha, it's <laughs> chanting that <mate. laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, do you want another drink? Yeah. Well, I'll finish up in less than one minute. Also, if you like what I do, the QR code down in my mailing list. Put your phone to that, I can tell you when I'm gigging nearby you. In the meantime, this song is inspired by mates of mine and Joe's. They have been married for 52 years. They've been together for 55 years. We didn't see them over the pandemic. And afterwards, we didn't see them for a bit because they were shielded. They are like teenagers together. They are tactile. They giggle in each other's company after nearly 60 years together. And that's what I want for me and Joe. So this song is called Longevity and Love. It was born out of a conversation we had with our old, old, old friends. And I hope... I hope you've enjoyed me. My name's Silky. Join the mailing list. Don't go to silky.com. Silky That's fuck all to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> this song um, goes out to the people looking for love, for the people in love, and the people in long-term relationships. It's been a pleasure entertaining you.
called it Longevity and Love. I don't pester you for anal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it'd be longer as well. <laughs> <laughs>